John chapter 8, verse 36. I think this is the only verse I know for the July 4th holiday. I think I've probably got three or four messages referencing this verse. <clears throat> the title of the message this morning, If the Son Therefore Shall Make You Free. If the Son Therefore Shall Make You Free. John 8, 36. It says, if the Son therefore uh, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. It's a word of prayer. Father, may you bless the message now. Father, may we see that uh, real freedom, true freedom, absolute freedom comes from you, comes from the Son. And just pray, Lord, that uh, not only that everybody here uh, has that freedom, but Father, that everybody that we know will have that freedom. And Lord, uh, we do thank you for a nation where we can speak freely this morning. Lord, we... We don't want to slight the, the blood that was shed on every battlefield that's been fought for this nation, for this country, for our freedom. We honor that. We respect that. But Lord, let us realize without the freedom that the Son gives, you're not really truly free. And Father, I just pray you bless now the message. Thank you, Father, for those that are here this morning. Um, may you bless what's said. We ask these things for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now, we could talk about a lot of, lot of different things about being free, and we could talk about personal liberty. Um, that's what uh, um, Brother Paul was talking about this morning during the song service, and thank God for personal liberty. Now, you know, personal liberty is always varying by degree. Uh, in every nation, um, there might be some personal liberty, but it may not be near the personal liberty that we as Americans can uh, enjoy. Obviously, over time, that liberty gets eroded, and as it's being eroded right now, we begin to lose those liberties that we once had, and mainly because people can't read. Because if they could read the Constitution, if they could just read what it says and believe what it says and do what it says, we could maintain those liberties because it's based on a document. You know, our liberties are based on a document, and thank God for that. If we just believe what it says... You realize that you are free if you're saved here this morning. And you can thank God you're an American. At least you can thank God today. It's not over with yet, but we can thank God today. Maybe tomorrow we won't. Uh, maybe next week or next month or next year you'll be hunted like they'd hunt a wild animal. You don't know that because the nations are fleeting. Okay, And I do thank God for America. I wish I'd have wore, I think... The, me and the assistant pastor are the only ones that didn't dress up for July 4th. I even got the tie, you know. I think you got the pants. I mean, he's got some Jim Dandy pants, man, yeah. Um, but everybody else wearing ties, you know, and I thought, oh, I had one. I had a oh, perfect tie for that, so, and didn't wear it, so it just goes to show you. But I was thinking about it in the message. Anyway... He says, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free. Oh, here's another thing. Soul liberty. We, we talk about that. Personal liberty in our nation, but soul liberty. Okay? You know that's what we call a Baptist distinctive? Baptists teach soul liberty. Now, I want to remind you that it would be a Baptist that will be the first one to take your liberty away. But we do believe in it. <laughs> Most of it, sometimes. Um, but soul liberty is just the liberty that Christ gave us. Okay? You know... When we think about uh, the things that we don't allow, we don't do, and this or that, you know what that's for, right? I mean, there's only two reasons. It's not to keep the law. It's either please God or have a testimony before the lost. It's because obviously if you don't please God and you don't, you're not a testimony to the lost, you're still going to heaven if you're saved. So you're not under it. But the reason you place yourself under it, the reason you place limitations on yourself, the reason you dress the way you dress, the reason you do the things you do, the way you do them, is not to bring a reproach on Christ and not to be a bad testimony to the lost. That still encompasses your soul liberty because you know why you're doing it. You're not doing it to please the Baptist in the row next to you. You should be doing it to please God and also that the lost can't look at you and say, that's the reason I'm going to hell, right there. That's the reason why I reject Christ, right there. And you don't want their bony finger pointed at you. But you have soul liberty. In fact, you could even take that literally. Because your Bible tells you in Colossians 2 that when Christ saved you, he circumcised you 
male or female, he circumcised you on the inside and cut away the body of the sins of the flesh. He cut it away from your soul. You were inside rattling around, stuck to a corpse, running errands for a corpse, but you are free. I'm serious, you are free. Why? You are not under the law. Your soul is not under the penalty of that law. Why? He cut it free. If, the, if therefore the Son shall make you free, you're free indeed. I just want to give you some simple things most of you know, but need to be reminded of some things that uh, the Son made you free from. The Son can make you free from sin and the wages of sin. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a free gift, and it makes you free from sin and the wages of it. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily physical death, but we'll find out there's more wages to it than just that. But every man has earned a wage. He's earned death. You know, death or sin works death in you. When sin came into the world, it just didn't work physical death. It worked spiritual death. As a matter of fact, Adam and Eve died spiritually nearly, uh, you know, almost a thousand years, 955 years, I think, at least for Adam, 955 years before he physically died. But it already worked death in him. The Bible says you are dead, you're born dead in trespasses and sins. Born with a sin nature that's working death in you. And yes, unless you are born again, unless there's a rebirth, unless there is, and all God's doing is restoring the image that Adam lost. He spiritually died. The day they, they disobeyed God, they both spiritually died. When you get born again, it restores that image, that communication with God. Until then, He doesn't even know you. He knows of you, but He says, Depart from me, ye cursed and everlasting fire. I never knew you. And God needs to know you. In fact, He needs to know you as family. God never sends family to hell. I'm talking about those born in His family. And anyone this age is saved is born into the kingdom of God. Thank God for that. But he'll set you free. Uh, Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. That thing got passed down to us. Death. Why? Sin. You say, well, it's old age killing us. Well, what's, what's causing the old age? What's causing this body to just grow? Why is it diseased? Why has it got problems? Why does it have to have doctors and nurses and hospitals? Why? Sin. Sin. It's caused all that. And there's only one man that can free you from its eternal grip. And that's what it's got on you. It's got an eternal grip if you're not saved. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That's the guy I'm talking about. I mean, all the other freedoms, listen, they're temporary, they're fleeting. But this freedom right here, when he sets you free, he says you're free indeed. You don't have to worry about it after that. You're free. If you want to escape the wages of sin, you must believe on this man, Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 18, he says, Being then made free from sin, amen, ye became the servants of righteousness. By the way, he is righteousness. I became his servant. In Romans 6, 22, he says, And now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. I'm glad he made me free from sin this morning. I mean, I'm glad to be in, in the, well, I guess we're still considered the freest country in the world. Um, there's probably one or two that are coming up fast on us. Maybe Cuba. I'm just kidding you. Um, I wouldn't say that. But it's good to be, I, I, wish I, was in the, I, I wish I was in the same country I remember back in the 70s and 60s and, and, and probably before that. Uh, I, like, I like America. You know why? Because you can, be, you can believe anything you want. I can even believe that I should try to talk you out of what you believe. I'm all, it's all right for me to believe that. It's all right for me to believe, even though everybody on, on uh, 
NBC, CBS, and ABC are telling you different. It's all right for me to believe that what you're practicing is wrong from the scriptures. What you're doing is wrong. If it says homosexuality is wrong, it's wrong. And I should have the right to believe that. Used to. Used to have that in this country. Now they're starting to, you know, turn their sights on you that if you believe that, they're going to punish you somehow. And they're trying to find ways to do that. Uh, you can be fired from your job for just stating that you don't agree with homosexuality. Well, the Bible doesn't agree with it. Well, I'm glad I'm free to believe that. Boy, but a, you're all thinking they're going to come busting through the doors or something? And possibility. All right. But the sun can make you free from sin and the wages of sin, and the sun can make you free from hell and the lake of fire. Man, I am always thankful for that. <laughs> I mean, I'm thankful every day. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 12 to 14, he says, I saw the dead. Remember we talking about the dead there? I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Remember that works can't save you? And guess where these folks wind up at? And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You see, it works spiritual death too. An eternal death. Not just physical death, but a soulish death. I'm glad to be free from that. I tell folks that I'm witnessing to, I said, I never worry about going to hell. I worry about a lot of things, you know. I've got, I'm worried right now about a rooster I've got, you know. I'm trying to keep the rooster separate from the hens because they've just beat them all up, you know, and their, ball, their backs are bald and everything. So I've separated them. i got one rooster, one rooster that knows how to escape anything I throw at him. I mean, I, the, the pin around them looks like Stalag 13. I mean, I've got Constantina wire. Kind of like. It's my mimic version of it. But I mean, I got all this wire up, you know. And I thought, I finally got them all in. I got three of them that can't figure it out. I got one that figured it out almost immediately. And this rooster, he, he, he jumps on this. I built him like a little Quonson hut type thing for them to get under in weather. And he jumps up on the Quonson hut, or the shelter, then jumps on, then get, flies up to the roof, then walks along the roof, then jumps down to the pen where the, where the hens are. So we captured him yesterday, and I clipped his wings. I mean, I, well, she did. I held him down, okay? He wasn't happy about that. He just looked like he had two flippers. And you know, this morning... I looked in there, and there he was, in there with the hens. I'm like, how did you do that? Because he had tried once. He said he tried to fly, but he couldn't. I'm telling you, this is an, he, it's got me so worried. Houdini, yeah. But hell, hell does never enter my mind. Why? I've been set free from that. Now, the rooster, that's, go, that's ongoing. Today, a new tactic. We'll see what happens. The Bible says you are the dead if you're not saved. That's why you wind up in a lake of fire, because you're dead to God. You need to be alive to Him. And you'll be judged according to your works. Revelation 20, 15, Whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. My name has been freely written in that book. I'm in that book, the book of life. Not only can the Son make you free from hell and the lake of fire, but the Son can make you free from the law that condemned you in the first place. You know, you say, how did that happen? Well, he lived a perfect life for me. Not only, listen, not only is death was substitutionary, his entire life was substitutionary. He lived an entire life without sin so he could accredit it to my account so that I would be free from the law. He, look, look at Romans chapter 8. Look at what it says there. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2 to 4. It says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, 
God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. I've already fulfilled it. I don't have to do it no more. You say, how did you fulfill it? I got what he did. I got accredited all, that, all those years living down here of sinless perfection was accredited. That's why I'm no longer under the law. The law can't touch me when it comes to sending my soul to an eternal hell. You can't touch me. Um, it says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He fulfilled it, and then he hung it on his cross. And that was the end of it. And I got credit today. You talk about being free. Like I said, the reason I do things is to please God, not the law. Not because I fear the law, because the law, obviously the law can't send me to hell anymore. I've been set free from all that. But to please God and to be a witness to people that are around me. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Isn't that what it says? Go look at the list under that. He's talking about the worst list you can possibly think of. A, a list of sinners. He says, but such were some of you. But you're washed. But you're sanctified. The reason, listen, the reason why you do it is not because of the law. No, it's because you want to be a good witness. You want to please God in your walk. That's the reason you do the things you do. That's the reason why you have standards. Not to please the Baptist brother next to you and the Baptist sister across the room. You have those standards so that nobody can point a finger at you and say, is that what a Christian is? That's why the Bible says there, it shouldn't be, there's certain things that shouldn't be named among you not one time. Because the world looks on. And don't give anybody an excuse to go to hell. Especially don't give your own family an excuse. Your own kin, your own friends. Because they're looking for one. The Bible says they accuse or excuse themselves. They'll accuse you and excuse themselves and say, uh-huh, if that's what a Christian is, I don't want to be one. You don't want to ever hear that. You want them to get angry. I mean, let them get angry. Let them get mad. Let them just mm, chew nails looking at you because you condemned them. You know what you condemned them? You condemned them because you bowed your head and prayed over your food at a restaurant. You condemned them because you got a Bible under your arm. You condemned them because you left your house on a Sunday morning and came to church. You condemned them. Just like Noah out there building that boat. Every day, every time the sun come up, you could hear him hammering. Putting, that, putting together an ark because God condemned the world. And every time you go to church, every time you open your Bible, every time you publicly pray, you condemn the world. That's why you have standards. That's why. Other than that, you wouldn't need them for anything. We wouldn't even need to be here. But God's trying to win a lost world. And He wants you to do your part. But you've been set, you've been set free from, from the law. You're free from it. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made, made, there it is, it's talked about make you free, made the righteous of God in him. There's that transaction, that beautiful transaction when I got saved. I had no idea that when I asked Jesus Christ to be my Savior, I transferred all my sin to him, and that's guilt, and he transferred all his righteousness to me. That happened in a, in a millisecond. Probably less than that. It happened when I said, Lord Jesus, please save me. Please give me the free gift of eternal life. Boom. He saved me. And that transfer took place right then and there, instantaneously and forever irreversible. Irreversible. Because you couldn't say you're set free this morning if it can be reversed. You couldn't say free indeed, that's for sure. It can't be reversed. The sun can, here's something else the sun makes you free from. He'll make you free from all men. I like this. 
1 Corinthians 9, verse 19. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19. Here's how Paul put it. He says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant at all, that I might gain the more. And that's, that, again, that's the reason why I'm free from all men. You know how I know that? Go ahead and try to affect my destiny. Go on. Well, 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 we'll throw you in jail. That won't affect it. We'll torture you. That won't affect it. We'll, we'll, we'll cause you to sin. That won't even affect it. You can't affect my destiny. Listen, you can't even affect my final authority. God is my authority. You know why I subject myself? For your sake. Isn't that what he said? He says, I, Yet have I made myself servant at all that I might gain the more. He's trying to win them. Listen, the reason why we obey the law, why it's good for a Christian to obey the law, be a, uh, I mean, you're supposed to be obedient to the law. You know why we do that? Good testimony. A witness to them. Man, your Bible even tells you in certain situations you're supposed to allow yourself to be defrauded. Because it's better for you to be defrauded than that that person perish. It shows a kind and merciful and gracious heart. It shows a God of love, and it's shown through you. There's no impact like forgiving somebody when they've done you wrong, and you say, I forgive you. No, nope, don't worry about it anymore. I forgive you. It's gone. It's done. It's over with. And they're just like, they don't understand it. They're looking for a re retribution. But you and I both know that if we got the retribution we deserved... We'd also be showing a little bit more grace in what we do. But no man has the, uh, uh, man has no authority over us, yet we obey for their sake. And to please God, of course. Luke chapter 12, verse 4 to 5 says, I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear, fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Now that's for a time probably in the great tribulation, but it, it, it can be applied to us in this way. Well, the, uh, the worst, the worst that an unsaved world can do to you is send you home. <laughs> the worst they can do is end all your problems. End all your pain. I mean, if they, if they you know... I think, um, I think just knowing we're going to live with them longer is more torture than thinking, you know, maybe they'll string us up tomorrow, you know. I don't know. I would probably think, well, you know, I'm not going to, that necktie thing, I'm not going to really like that. But it will be over very quickly, okay? Especially if I, you know, if I jump just before they release the things, like snap the neck and be gone, you know. I mean, you, there's ways you could help it out. Could you sandbag my feet, please? Uh, just to make it go a little bit quicker, you know. It used to be they'd hung they had they'd get somebody to grab hold of their legs and, and swing with them, you know, just to try to get them to suffocate, you know. No, you want the neck to snap. I, I I'll give you a good a lot of good pointers on those things. In case you're electrocuted or hung, quartered, you know. Uh, but God forbid we should have to live with them for another twenty years. God forbid. Even so come Lord Jesus. Because I can't imagine what this... If, if it looks this way now, and I understand, brother, we are still free, but if it looks this way now, and Sodom and Gomorrah is looking very similar to our, our country, what's it going to look like in 20 years? It's unimaginable. Uh... Not only that, but the Son can give you, a, give you the free gift of eternal life. Okay? It's free. I love things free. Always have. I don't know why. I, I don't mind earning something, but, you know, when somebody gives something away free, yeah, I'm one of those trash pickers. I'll be going down the road, man, we'll hit the brake. And we'll see something on the side of the road, man. Somebody's garbage. But it's not garbage to us. We'll pick it up, throw it in the back, you know. I picked up lamps and tables and 
old singer sewing machines. And I mean, I, I, I mean, it's unbelievable what some folks will throw out. What some folks consider garbage, I consider, you know, one man's, one man's trash is another man's treasure, you know. But man, the gift I got from Jesus Christ, man, that thing didn't come out of a trash can. That was eternal life. And, and it was free. I threw that in because that's, you know, he says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, even the faith to believe is free. You know, what? Once, once a person, they hear the gospel message, they hear uh, the gospel count of the death, burial, and resurrection, and God gives them, that's the faith to believe it. Faith covered by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He gives them that faith to believe them. And it's what? It's free. Maybe that's why the reason I got saved when I was 16, because I just like things that are free. And this was free. Now, it did cost somebody something. It cost Jesus Christ everything he had. It didn't cost me nothing. So I'm glad for that. I'm glad for the free gift. Not only being free from all men, free from sin and death, free from death and hell, uh, or free from hell and the lake of fire. I don't know about free from death. We might get there. It's a possibility. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The freedom that frees you from all men, law, sin, death, hell, and the lake of fire is free. It's free. How can anybody turn that down? Yet we haven't turned it down all the time. Romans 5.18 says this, Therefore, as by the offense of one, that was Adam, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. It got passed down. You got, you got Adam's nature, not God's nature. You're not in the image of God when you're born. You're in the image of Adam. The image of God is what's restored when you're born again. It says, there, therefore, by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, that be Jesus Christ, the last Adam, he's called, the free gift, you see, get that? The free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Thank God for things that are free. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. It goes beyond that. The Son will give you a free place to live for all eternity. You know how that excites me because I'm tired of paying my mortgage. It's like it's, I'm never going to get to the end of it. Got a little late start, being on the mission field, coming home, getting a house. But it's like I'm never, and of course, don't ever refinance uh, for longer and try to get your money in your hand. Oh, no. Oh, no. You'll be 75 years old and you're still paying your mortgage off, you know. Can't retire, you know, working at McDonald's or, or Walmart, being a greeter, because you've got to pay the mortgage. You refinanced 15 times, and I'm right there, man. I've got, got, got a ways to go. Want to get that thing paid. I'm glad the Lord called me home. i got a free place to live for all eternity. I like that. You know what he says, Galatians 4.26? But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Man, I love things that are free. And the one that builds it, he's not even going to charge me. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And he's not even charging rent. Wow. No property tax, which I think is very unconstitutional, if you want to hear my point of view on that. Um, and New Jerusalem, I mean... It's not just free of sin, death, and hell. It's free of tears, sorrow, and pain. Those aren't allowed in the city. Isn't that going to be wonderful? Nobody bringing you down. Revelation 21, verse 3 and 4 says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Won't that be wonderful? All we got to do is just get there, knowing that it's true without a shadow of a doubt in our hearts, knowing we've been set free from all this mess, and one of these days, it's going to be wonderful. But I'm going to give you something else, okay? Just going to throw this in, just a little extra. Matthew chapter 17, verse 24 to 26. 
thought about this the other day. He says, um, Matthew 17, verse 24 and 26, just a little side point. It says, when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money, that's tax money, came to Peter and said, doth not your master pay tribute? He saith, yes. And when he was coming to the house, Peter, or Jesus, prevented him, saying, what thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? What he's asking, what happens is Peter answered something without really knowing whether it was true or not. He didn't know whether Jesus paid his taxes or not. He just said, yes. Well, the Lord prevents Peter from coming to the door, and he says, uh, let me ask you a question. Of whom do the kings of the earth take tribute? From their children or from strangers? He said, from strangers. What they do is they, they put everybody else under tribute. If they conquer a people, they put them under tribute. They pay. But the children are free. At least that's supposed to be. Okay? I mean, I can think of a dozen countries that we've overtaken we should put to tribute. Because that's what they do. And, but Jesus saith unto him, he said, then are the children, what? Free. Are we his children? Guess what we're going to be free of? Any taxes. Any kind of taxes. All taxes. Because if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And that's got to include taxes. So I'm glad to be free this morning. Um, I'm glad to live in this country. You're right. I'd rather be here than in China. I'd rather be here than in Russia. I'd rather be here than in just about any nation I can think of. Now, I can think of some wilderness area that I might want to be in where nobody knows I'm at, but, and that's even here in America. But thank God to be free. Let's all stand. If you're not free this morning, and I'm talking about that spiritual freedom we're talking about here, free from death and hell, and free from sin and the wages of sin, free from the law, then we'll be glad to help you get there. I think I'm preaching to the choir this morning. I was hoping to have some visitors, extra visitors, but um, maybe they'll hear it online. So, Father, let's, let's, or let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning. Thank you for the freedom that we, that we enjoy from the Son of God. And, Lord, we're thankful that no...